Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Unity of Little Rock. I had a great week last week. It was so great, I'm exhausted today. <laughs> I was on vacation playing, and I, play, I must have played really hard. <laughs> but I had fun, and today, I don't know if you're going to say today's fun, because we may go places that don't quite feel so fun, and, that, and that's okay, because that's part of life. And know that our ceremony that we're going to be involved with today means that we're we're not going to do our normal routine and flow that we do in our service. So things will be out of place for some of you that are familiar, and you'll go, hey, I didn't belong there. It's okay, <laughs> roll, roll with it, roll with it. We have a community that's based in the principles of the Unity Movement. Charles and Myrtle Fillmore were the co-founders of Unity. There's an understanding there that the, the life that flows and that we know we're a part of, meaning our life is we born, grow, age, and eventually decline into a place that's a transition that's death. That life has within it life, capital L, life, that the entire universe is made up of that life. It is that life. And that we are that expression, that divine expression here. And even the days we don't feel so divine, we're still that divine expression. And part of our spiritual unfoldment is to be able to let that divine express in its full potential versus the limitation that so often we place on it. So welcome that you came here to be part of this today. Came to be part of this community, became to be part of that awakening, that recognition that you are more than whatever you believe you are at this moment, you're more than that. And when you believe more in the next moment, you're more than that. And you came to be a part of that. So welcome. Thank and you, Billy. It doesn't matter what the neighbors think. <laughs> it doesn't matter what the neighbors think. No, it does not, Ken. <laughs> recognize your ancestors because we've come through this great season of growth our summer when everything was alive and green and vibrant and it produced fruit and we come to this harvest time and in the harvest we're recognizing all the great work and great labor that came before and in that recognition of that fruit we recognize recognize that many contributed to us and that which we produce, the fruit that we share in the world. That fruit is us. We're the fruit. Right? But we recognize those that have gone before. Those are our ancestors. And our ancestors gave to us, and as they give to us, we will give to those that follow behind us. We will share our fruit and that fruit would be passed on, and that legacy continues on generation after generation. So this time of year, we acknowledge that. And we acknowledge that in this season of growth and harvest, there comes a time of rest. And we like to label it as winter in our part of the world. Right? But it's a time to rest. For most of us, kind of ignore that it's a time for rest. We just continue on and do things. But nonetheless, in nature, in life, this is a time of rest. To, to sit down, to allow the fields to be barren, knowing that a new life, a new growth will come. This is true in our personal lives. Because all of us were born, we will continue forward in this life after our birth, and we will grow, and we will do wonderful accomplishments, and we'll produce great fruit, so we'll have this harvest in our life, and when we finally come to that time of rest, we'll move into that ultimate rest, we'll move into death. 
And death is something in our society we don't seem to like to embrace too well as a general rule. We like to avoid it. We like to push it away. We even like to tell people that are grieving they, grieving that they need to move along, get over it, because mm -hmm. it's been too long. Well, grief doesn't punch a clock. Grief comes and goes as it desires, comes and grows, it comes and goes as it unfolds within us because our grief is about us. We grieve someone that we've lost or we grieve something we have lost. But that grief is within us. And that power of grief is really showing us the depth of our love. Because the more we love, the more we grieve. And the more we grieve, the more we show that we were loved. That we were loved and that we're loving. That we are that love. That we want to be able to give to that person or that thing that's no longer in our life. So grief is not something that's um, abnormal in our lifetime. It's just part of the normal process for us. It's part of our normal journey. So our adventure today together is that we're going to recognize our ancestors and we're going to recognize the grief that takes place in us. So to give you a little idea of what we're going to do, I'm going to take you into a very brief meditation, but the meditation is just to allow us to settle in and to relax. And we're going to write a letter. And that letter will be to our ancestors. That letter could be to a situation in our life that we grieve. Probably the easiest for us, though, is to write a letter to those who come before. And what do we say in that letter? You get to say whatever you want. Maybe it's what wasn't said in life. Maybe what is, it is what you miss about this person in your life. Maybe it's the joys and happiness that you can see came from your experiences with them. Maybe it's the lessons that they gave you that now you get to carry forward even though they're not here. I am, um, as I prepared for this this past week while on vacation, which meant, <laughs> thank you, I gave it a little time. I recognize the places that grief arises within me. Um, I have a father and a brother that died when I was young, and I never got to know them. And I can recognize that there's grief there from that loss of relationship. The stepfather that raised me um, was as loving a human being as I've ever experienced in my life. And he's been gone for more than 30 years now. And I, I grieve him. My sister passed right before COVID, and I grieve her, especially when I go on vacations, because she always, the, the sisters, my sister and my wife Kim's sister would go on vacations together. So I feel that loss of celebration that we used to do on vacations together. But also grieve, um, I don't have the physical health that I used to have. And I feel that loss. I grieve that. I grieve the, um, I don't have the financial wealth that I used to have in life. And I, and I miss that. I <laughs> grieve that. And as you can hear, each of those have their own depth. Some of those are intense grief. And some of them are mild. And maybe I've had lots of years to heal and grow and expand through that grief. So they all have their own different weights in my life. But there's still grief. I especially grieve, I learned just a few days ago, one of my classmates from seminary, Unity Worldwide Spiritual Institute, passed away. Mm -hmm. um, and I grieve for her because she was part of my family for so many years. So I'm just sharing that we all have grief if we bother to look for it. Some of us will know right now, where it is, where it's alive, where it's fresh within us. And some of us may have to hunt a little. And know that it's okay, too, to grieve those things that aren't human beings. 
we can grieve those relationships like I grieve the loss of my father and my brother but I more so grieve the loss of relationship loss of my expectations of what it was to be in a family to have a father and a brother I grieve that you can grieve your pets you can grieve maybe that job that you were so counting on that you knew was the perfect fit and they didn't offer it to you maybe you can grieve that so in our exploration today, know that wherever your grief takes you is wherever your grief takes you. That's okay. Once we've written that, then we'll do two other little pieces, and I'll explain those to you. They're little because they're, they're simple. I think they're powerful, but they don't take a lot of explanation. So when we get there, I'll share that with you. So with this, I invite you let's let's get a piece of paper there should be some on your table you have pens on your table and know that you're not sharing this with anyone so nothing you write to, as we want to be reminded 
of the gifts that we were that were shared with us, but the love that we have. Whether that's the love for an individual, or it's a love for ourselves, for the situations that didn't unfold quite as we expected. So if you don't get to finish your letter here in this moment, notice that you will get to continue that. Whether you do that at home, or it's next week or next month. Celebration and grief both get to arise and continue as is appropriate for you. The recognition is it's part of who I am. The grief that I have makes me more aware, more astute in my own life to the things that I value, but also helps me recognize that which I miss, that which was there and is gone, that which was never there and hasn't been seen, experienced yet. It allows me in that recognition. So grief has gifts, even in the depth of the pain. And through that process of grief, we get to recognize that, we get to see that. So if it's not there today, it will be there will come as will the idea and understanding that the grief will no longer have quite the same edge and intensity for us I'm not I'm not a holder that the grief will ever go away I just know that it diminishes to the place that when I remember the grief it takes me to the place of remembering who and what I'm grieving, and thus my ability now to celebrate that experience. Celebrate my sister, that I remember uh, being brilliant and blindly dumb all in the same moment. Does, <laughs> does that sound like a younger brother talking about his older sister? Yeah. I can remember so many wonderful experiences with her even though a part of me goes, I wanted her to be on that trip with me last week, playing like we always played, as silly and as stupidly as we played together. So at this point, we're going to acknowledge who or what we wrote about. You're going to do that by just speaking their name or speaking just enough of the situation so that we know without details, you don't have to share the intimate details of it, but just enough that we know what the situation was if you um, wrote of a situation experience in your life. So that we as a community can hold that and celebrate that with you. And in doing that, I will also Chime. Because that same resonance and same vibration that moves out from this chime, moves out from you, moves out from that experience that you had with that person, with that situation, and we're allowing that vibration to continue forth. So this is part of us beginning the release of this experience. Not the release of the memories, not the release of the love, meaning to be free of it altogether, but the release as in allowing it to flow, allowing it to be a cycle within us, a movement in, a movement out, a movement in, a movement out. And we'll acknowledge that with a tone. So I'll begin by acknowledging Patty Shaw, my sister. Randy Jacobs, my classmate, J. 
just speak. Marjorie, my mom. Marjorie. Mary and Charles, my mother and father. Mary and Charles. Kenneth and Norma, my aunt and uncle. Kenneth and Norma. Twelve years alone. Twelve years alone. My mom and dad, my brother, my husband. Mom, dad, brother, husband. Mm -hmm. And Elaine and Lowell, classmates. One more time. Elaine Lowell, classmates. Elaine. Others? All my ancestors that preceded my existence mm -hmm. and, pre and present life. The gang. All the ancestors that preceded. I ain't got enough chimes for them at the moment. Aunt Mary, Uncle Jack. Aunt Annie. Aunt Mary, Uncle Jack, Annie. And Aunt Annie. And my grandma. Mary. And Grandma Mary? Matt, yes. And Dad. I hold and see that this vibration, as it comes off this chime and moves in and we pick it up and hear it with our ears, it doesn't end. The vibration continues forth. It moves out from this city, from this planet, from this galaxy. It moves out and resonates in the universe. And the lives and the situations that we have voiced here, they too move out into the universe. And with them goes our love, but also with them goes our grief. Because that is part of our human experience. And we share that with the universe. And it's picked up and claimed and celebrated. Not celebrated because it's a negative thing, but celebrated because it is your life. And you are filled with life. And life encompasses all the experiences. So we acknowledge and celebrate those that have come before. And we acknowledge that which is alive within us because of the people that have come before the experiences that we've had. And we celebrate and acknowledge that which is to come because we're still here in this world to carry that forth. And that vibration that we are will impact those around us, but it too will resonate and move out into the universe. And the universe celebrates us So our last piece together is that we're going to take a stroll. We're going to move into the backyard and you're going to take your letters if you so choose and we're going to release them in the fire. So put on your walking shoes. For those online, um, 
We're going to do our best to carry the technology with us so you can be part of that. If you have a way to burn at home, wonderful, just be safe. If not, then know that you can crumple it up and throw it in the trash. This is about releasing. Releasing, yes, the pain, the grief, that which holds hurt for us, but it's releasing the love, the joy, the celebration that is also contained in that. So if you'll join me, we're just going to go right out the back door. of our love. So even if we wrote in our letters the heartache, the pain that we may have experienced in our relationships of those that have gone before us. Recording in progress. There is um, there is always love and joy experienced somewhere in the depth. But also in these letters, so many of us wrote to of that which we experienced that was touching, warm, loving in our experience. So as we burn this, we burn and release the pain, but we also release that joy, that celebration. And we acknowledge the life that we have lived, that has been touched by those ancestors that mattered so greatly. We also acknowledge those situations that shaped us to bring us to where we're at. Because my desire for that which I was missing has led me to take action and steps and awarenesses and growth that I never would have had without those situations. So as you burn this letter just in your own intentions, Send forth the depth of the pain and the incredible love that is contained in there as well. You just come forward as you're willing. And so it is. And just as this smoke <clears throat> lifts itself up and spills our nostrils, and the neighbors next door are going, <laughs> what's that smell? <laughs> We're releasing that. Those molecules don't just stop two houses down. They don't stop two states down. They continue. Just as we continue, just as we recognize and know that death is in our end, it hasn't been the end of our ancestors as evil. Not in their existence, but not in ours. It still continues forward. So we'll close with our prayer protection for those who remember it. Let's see if Russ does. <laughs> So, together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. 
the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Thank you. Thank you for being here.